in portrait. So if we pull this up in a media player and watch this footage, you'll see that, well, it's sideways. It's because it was shot with a camera or with a phone, rather, in portrait mode rather than landscape, just to help add a little bit of realism to the shot. Almost like someone just pulled out their phone and started recording the video. Now, when we bring this into After Effects, that orientation is going to cause some issues with our camera tracker once we start to actually track this footage. So the first thing we'll want to do is to take this footage, bring it into After Effects, and then we're actually going to render out an image sequence. That way, since they're just images, we can actually do all of our edits and then render it back out and recompile the final uh, footage. All right, so we have our footage in here. I'm going to organize this just a little bit, create a new folder called footage, drag my video into there. Now let's create a new composition so we can just left click and drag this down to create a new composition. You'll notice that After Effects, After Effects does recognize the correct orientation of this, uh, but as I mentioned before, it will cause issues once we start to do tracking. So what we'll want to do is to render this out. So Control Shift and then Slash in order to add this to the render queue. And let's just open this up here, open up our module settings. Switch this to, I'm going to use a PNG sequence. And I also want to make sure that under my format options that we do not have any compression. So just make sure that's set to none. There we go. That's good. Very simple. Now we just need to select where we want to render this out to. So let's create actually a new folder here because this is going to kick out a bunch of different images. So this will be our image sequence. There we go open that up, hit save, and now we just tell After Effects to render this out. All right, so we have our image sequence rendered out. You can see it took a little under seven minutes. Now, the time it takes to actually render on your system is going to be completely dependent on the power of your system. All right, so the next step that we'll want to do is to bring our image sequence back into After Effects. So I'm just going to be in my project palette here hit control I in order to import it looks like it opened up off screen here so I'm going to import a file I'm going to imp go into the image sequence folder that we created I'm going to select the very first uh, file of the image sequence here to make sure that the PNG sequence is checked and then hit open so After Effects is going to bring in all of these different frames as a sequence so if we ever want to see what the difference is here, uh, we can see this is our actual video file. So this is a QuickTime file. We have our PNG files here. And this is our image sequence. So this is what we're primarily going to be working with. I'm just going to left click and drag in order to pull that into the footage folder there. So now that we have our image sequence, we'll want to create a composition out of this. But before we do that, let's make sure that After Effects is actually reading this sequence with the same frame rate as our movie. Because if it isn't, then we can have issues syncing up with the audio later on once we recompile everything. So if we select our movie here, we can see that this is 30 frames per second. Now if we select our sequence, we can see that After Effects is also reading this at 30 frames per second. So this particular shot is okay, but we actually had multiple shots that we were creating, and as it turns out, not all phones shoot at the same frame rate. So if you do need to change this for the image sequence that, that you're working on, you can just right-click, go to Interpret Footage, Main, or use the shortcut Control-Alt-G, or open that up and then adjust the frame rate right here. So if you're working with something that's 24 frames or 29 frames or whatever it may be, on this case, I'll leave it at 30 here and then hit OK. Now the last step here is to take this and bring it into a new composition. So we can do that exactly the same way we did with our footage here. Just left click and drag this into a new comp. I'm going to hit enter in order to rename this. This will be our master composition. 
I'm also going to drag this outside of the footage folder so that way we have our project panel nice and organized here. All right, great. So now we have our image sequence ready to go. Let's move on to our next lesson where we'll look at creating an alpha mat for our shot. See where we want our alpha mat to be or what do we want it to affect. So in this shot, what we want is we want our meteor to streak across the sky here move across and then it's going to go behind this house so this area right here is really the key to where we want to make sure our alpha mat looks good because we want it to go behind this house and we want to make sure that when it goes behind this house this little pipe right here the roof all of this looks like the meteor is actually going behind the house and not in front of it so basically what we want is to get the alpha mat so our sky is white and then the houses in the foreground are black and that'll let us create the effect of our meteor going behind the house later on. Now with that in mind, there's really a number of ways that we could create the mat. There's really no right or wrong way as long as you're getting the end result that you need. And depending on what shot you're doing, will really determine what you need to do in order to get the alpha mat that you need. So we're not really going to go through what each of the different effects are in this particular course. Uh, we do have plenty of courses over at digitaltutors.com that can help you learn exactly what you may need to do or what these different tools are. But let's look at what we used for this particular shot. So the first thing we're going to do is to come in and create a new composition so we're not working in our master composition. Now because all we have is our image sequence in here, we can simply duplicate this, call this the alpha mat, so we have a composition to work in. Let's double click to open that guy up. There we go. Now let's start by applying an effect. So the first thing I'm going to apply is actually brightness and contrast. So come into color correction, brightness and contrast. Now the reason for this is I want to really make this area right here blown out. So if I bring this up a little bit, it really starts to blow out this area right here, which is going to help us because the next thing I want to add is a luma key. So we come into effect, keying, luma key. This is going to use the luminosity of the image to determine what areas get keyed out. So because we adjusted the brightness and contrast and then we come in and add this luma key, After Effects is reading these controls from top to bottom. So it'll run the brightness and contrast first and then it'll run this luma key that will let us key out anything darker. Now we can adjust this if we want to. In this particular case I am going to use key out darker and then increase this threshold. So if we really start to crank this up, we can see the effect that we're getting. And really we're getting uh, most of the house actually keyed out with just a couple very simple effects. Now there are a few areas in this particular sh uh, portion of the shot. Uh, if you remember this pipe is really one area that we want to make sure that we get a good key on. Um, Some of these other areas will probably also want to be pretty good as the meteor goes behind the house in this area of the shot. So I'm going to add another effect. Let's come into effect, keying. I'm going to add a key light. Now we can uh, have this key light here in or, or take out whatever color that we want by simply sampling a color from our image. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to turn off these other effects so we can really zoom in here and get a color. So I'm going to get something underneath the gutter here, maybe something like that. There we go. Now if we turn our effects back on, uh, we can see what we're getting. Let's hop into our alpha view to really get a better idea. So uh, this was before the key light. And then after the key light, we can see we're really starting to get some of that pipe back, as well as some of this gutter area here, even some of the window. Uh, but we don't have to stop there. Let's come in and adjust our gain on this in order to really get that 
alpha looking really, really nice. Maybe even clip the black a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. So we have a really nice alpha mat right here, which for the purposes of our shot probably will be good enough. Now let's scrub through just to make sure. Well, it looks like there's an area right here. Maybe let's come in and actually uh, update this a little bit just to play it safe. Even though our meteor is going to be streaking across the sky up here, uh, let's just play it safe and key this area out here. So I'm going to come in and add a new effect. So I'm going to add keying. I'm going to add a color key here. And rather than actually keying a color in the RGB space, I'm going to come in and key in the alpha view and increase my color tolerance. Now, this particular here is, if we go a little bit too far, it starts to key out the sky. And we may need to come in and find another area in order to get the settings that we want. So really, it's a process of figuring out what will look best for our shot. You don't always need to go in and uh, try it once. And if it doesn't work, you can keep trying, maybe finding a little bit different area because each color that you sample is going to be a little bit different. Maybe moving a little bit and sampling another color. I'm pretty happy with the way that this is looking. We have most of this area right here. If we scrub through the rest of our shot, everything looks pretty good. Uh, we have a little area right here that we probably could clean up. Not, once again, I'm not 100% sure if we're even going to use the shot all the way to the end uh, because our meteor is going to go behind the house here. Uh, but once again, just to play it safe, let's go ahead and rather than adding an effect, let's add a solid up here in order to hide this area in our alpha mat. So I'm going to come in, layer, solid, doesn't really matter what color. All we want is something that is not transparent. So let's go ahead and just create a mask for this guy here. There we go. And that hides that. Make sure that it doesn't affect anywhere else in our shot. And that looks pretty good. It isn't a perfect alpha mat. You'll notice there's these four little white uh, circles right here. These are actually uh, lights that are in front of the house. If we switch to our RGB mode here and turn off all of this, we can see that those are actually the lights there. Uh, but for this particular shot, since we know really the areas that we want to focus on is up here in the sky and really right around this area here, I think this is going to work for this shot. So you can always continue to tweak the mat if you'd like. I'm happy with the way that this is working. So I'm going to render this out as our alpha mat. So I'm going to select the comp here, control shift, and then slash in order to add it to the render queue. Under the output module, just like we did with the image sequence, I'm going to export this as a PNG sequence. Make sure there's no compression. And I'm only going to render the alpha, because that's all I really care about for the alpha mat here. Hit OK. Just make sure that it is rendering to the image sequence folder. We have our alpha mat. Very good. So we're ready to render this out. I'm going to hit render on this. And as this renders, let's move on to the next lesson, where we'll look at tracking our shot. We're going to be duplicating our shot sequence a little bit later on, and I find it's easier to track first and then duplicate the sequence just so I don't have to manually copy and paste the tracking from different layers. So anytime you're working in After Effects or really any sort of VFX shot at all, it's always a good idea to kind of think ahead of time and see where you can save some time. All right, so let's track this shot here. Make sure this is selected. Let's come up to window, open up our tracker, and I'm just going to hit track camera and see what the results are that we get. 
Now, depending on your system, this could take a while to track. You can see this is starting to go through the frames here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this tracks. All right, so a track is done. If we open up advanced here, we can see we have an average error of about 0.95 pixels. So if we zoom in and start to kind of scrub through this, this track looks really good. There's really not a lot of uh, sliding or anything like that. This is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and create the camera. Now we're not really going to go through tracking in depth in this course. But it's worth noting that uh, I am using the 3D camera tracker and it's a new feature in After Effects CS6 which is actually what I'm using for this course. So if you're using an earlier version or if the shot that you're tracking does need some additional tracking in it, if you're not familiar with camera tracking in general, whatever it may be, I'd really recommend watching our Tracking in After Effects course to get a better idea of what tracking is and some tips for how you can improve your tracks. All right, so now that we have our track done, Let's bring in the alpha mat that we created in our last lesson. So I'm going to hop over to the project palette here. Hit Control I in order to import. Import the alpha mat. Make sure that the PNG sequence is checked. Hit Open. And we have our alpha mat brought in. So I'm going to dump this into the footage folder. And then pull this into my composition. So once we have this in our composition, uh, we can actually turn this in to a mat for our meteor shot. So I'm going to open up my options here, Let's switch this track mat to be a luma mat inverted. So now you can see we have our foreground, but not the sky. All we really need to do to get the sky is to then duplicate this, and rather than having the luma inverted, we just want to use the luma mat. So we'll duplicate that. And rather than being inverted, we just use a luma mat. I might actually uh, go off the screen there. So we have our luma mat. There we go. So the end result that we have is we have one layer that is the foreground, and then one layer that is the background. So let's rename these before we forget which one is which. So this is the background. This is the background mat. This is the foreground. And this is the foreground mat. There we go. And great, so in this lesson, we tracked our footage using the 3D camera tracker here in After Effects. We also brought in the alpha mat that we made in our last lesson, so our sky in the background is separated from the houses in the foreground. So let's move on to our next lesson, where we'll start looking at how we can lay the groundwork for our meteor's movements in the, or the trajectory. Now, the benefit of using a light is that, one, it can work in 3D space, so our th uh, 3D uh, tracking data will work with it. But we'll also be able to use the light later on once we actually start to create the look of the effect itself. Okay, so let's come in. I'm going to come into, oh, make sure I have my composition selected. Come into new. I'm going to create a new light. There we go. I'm going to call this my tail emitter. Because we're going to have two parts to the meteor. There's the tail that's going to be right behind the uh, ball of light, as it were. And then we're going to have the stream. It's almost like a stream that you would see an airplane uh, create in the sky uh, that meteors actually do as well. Now I'm going to use a point light type. We're not actually going to be using the light from this, so it doesn't really matter. But making it a point light will just make it easier to move around. All right, so once we have this created, OK. Now we want to key the trajectory of the meteor. 
Now, since we have our shot tracked in 3D space, this will be very easy to do with some simple position keyframes. So I'm going to come in and maybe clean up my interface a little bit so it'll be a little bit easier to see. Just move these off to the side. And let's start at the very beginning of our shot. So here is our light. Now, we can click and drag in order to move this around. I'm actually going to lock all of my other layers because all I want to move is the actual light. So let's take our light, position it at the top left here because we do want our meteor starting maybe up out of frame coming on coming in as the shot goes so here I'm gonna come into my position hit P add a keyframe let's move this a little bit forward and move this guy over so basically what we're doing here is we're creating the trajectory of what we want our meteor to do now I'm creating a few more keyframes that I'm really going to need, but it's easier to create a couple keyframes kind of going forward and then come in. And once we have the basically the start and the end position of our meteor, let's select the actual keyframes, delete those, and what we're left with is our meteor's trajectory. Very cool. Now we can come in and tweak this however we may want. Uh, we may want to add a little bit of an arc to it. So if we select this guy here, select the end point. We can come into our pen tool, convert this to a bezier, and we get this nice little handle. So what's really cool about this is we can get a really nice trajectory for our meteor without very many keyframes. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Maybe adjust the trajectory just to give it a little bit of an arc. We can maybe position this down a little bit since we're to kind of compensate for the arc that we do have. Very, very cool. So this is basically the trajectory that our meteor is going to take in the sky. That was really easy, wasn't it? Now, this light is actually moving in 3D space. So you can see we have X, Y, and Z position data right here. Now, a little bit later on, we're going to be using a plugin called No Light Factory. And we're going to run into an issue because the version of No Light Factory that we're using is not actually the newest version. And the version that we're using does not have X, Y, and Z position data. So that's going to cause an issue in the future. Now not everyone can upgrade to the latest and greatest version of software and so this is actually something that's going to be fairly common that you're going to be working on with different shots. And as I mentioned before, anytime you're working on a shot it's always a good idea to do some planning ahead in order to be able to foresee some of these issues and plan workarounds for them. So before we go any further, now that we have our trajectory in 3D space, let's move on to our next lesson where we can look at how we can convert that 3D space into 2D space. No Light Factory doesn't support 3D space. So even though we haven't started adding in that uh, the No Light Factory plugin yet. Before we go any further, we'll save ourselves a lot of frustration later on if we take the time now to convert the 3D data of our trajectory, which we can see here, so we can see that X, Y, and Z data, into 2D data with just X and Y. So our motion designer, Austin, came up with a pretty ingenious method in order to get this to work. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a little shape that we can track. So I'm going to hit Control N in order to create a new composition. Let's create it 500 by 500. Call this Tracker. There we go. Now let's create a few solids in order to create our uh, shape that we can then track. So Layer, New, Solid. We can use the shortcut Control Y in order to do that. So we have a white solid. 
hit Control Y. We also want a black solid. And then we'll duplicate the black solid because we actually want two of them. So we have our black solid on top. Let's scale that to 30%. A white solid, let's scale that to 70%. I'm using the hotkey S in order to open up the scale parameter here and adjust those values. And what we're left with is a little shape that's black to white to black. Now because the motion tracker in After Effects really tracks based on contrast, this should give us a really good little uh, tool, or a shape that we can actually track across the sky. Now again, we're not really going into uh, tracking in depth in this course, but we do have plenty of courses at digitaltutors.com that you can use in order to learn more about tracking. All right, so I'm going to hop back into the master composition here. Let's pull in our tracker object. That's pretty big, so let's scale this down a little bit. There we go. Now what we'll want to do is to position this directly on top of our light. So it doesn't really matter where in the timeline we are when we do this, just that when we wherever we decide to start, we actually have it on top. So I'm going to move this into 3D space so that way it can be placed exactly on top of the light. Hit P in order to get to the position. And then I'm just going to copy and paste the position from the light to the tracker here. So copy, paste, control C and control V. There we go. So we have it placed exactly on top of the light but you'll notice it's black. Now the reason for that is because this light is actually affecting this uh, shape because we have our 3D turned on. That's really going to defeat the purpose of the color that we just made in order to track. So let's turn that off. I'm gonna come in and rather than under transform, let's go into our material options and turn off accepts lights. There we go. So now we get our shape back. We have it placed exactly on top of the light. And now, instead of doing a 3D camera track like we did before for our shot, for this, let's do a 2D track. So in order to do this, I'm going to take the master layer here. I'm going to click and drag into a new composition. Now, this is going to give us a new composition with the master composition inside of it. So I'm going to rename this just so it's a little bit easier to know what we're doing here. So this is our track motion composition. Or we can call it 2D motion, 2D, whatever you want to call it. It's basically what we're going to use for our 2D track. And it looks like when we did that, we lost the actual position of where we were in time when it was directly on top. There we go, 613, looks like we have 613. All right, so now we have everything set up. Now what we want to do is to track this using the track motion tracker. So if you don't have this open, you can go to window, tracker. I still had it open from the last time when we tracked, did our 3D camera track. This time we're going to track motion. So that's going to give us this track point here. Zoom in, select this guy, and move it up to be over top of the shape here. There we go. That's pretty good, right in the middle. And now what we want to do is to analyze this track. And as this moves, as this tracker moves in 3D space, that will give us the X and the Y in 2D space of what it looks like on this image, essentially converting that 3D track into 2D. Oh, although there is one thing that I forgot to do. Very, very important. Let's hop back to our master here. We place this on top, but if you notice when we lost our time, if we start to move, it's not actually moving along with it. So it's not moving along with it. So once we have that position directly on top of it, we're gonna hop back to the exact frame where we have the position matched up. 
Now we want to parent this to the light. So now that that's parented, it will move with the light in 3D space. A very, very important step that I had forgotten to do. So let's go back to the exact frame that we had chosen to start this track on. There we go. Hop back into our tracker. We have that set up on top there. And now it's going to analyze as this shape moves across. The shape is moving in 3D space, but this track will give us the 2D tracking data. So I'm just going to go ahead and analyze this and pause the video while it analyzes. All right, so our analyzing of the track is done here. We come back, we can see what it looks like all the way back to the point where we started, and then we lose that track. So this is why it doesn't really matter where we start, because all we have to do now is to find that frame that we started at, and rather than analyzing forward, now we just analyze backwards and we'll get the remainder of the track. Awesome, so now we have our 2D tracking data. So if we scrub through this, we'll see our tracker moving along and our 2D data being analyzed there. So now let's take all of this data that we have and bring it into our master comp. So for this tracker here, if we open this up, find our motion tracker, we want this feature center. So I'm going to go all the way to the beginning, select this feature center, hit control C, come back to our master comp, Let's come in and create a null that we'll use to uh, hold all of that tracking data. So come into Layer, New, Null. This is just an object that's not going to move. I'm going to rename this so I know what this is. This is my 2D tracking data. There we go. And under the position, we're going to keep this as a 2D shape so it only has X and Y data. Hit Control V, and now we have this null that is moving exactly with our light. Awesome. So what we've done is we've taken our 3D tracking data and now converted it into 2D. So we can see it kind of analyzes strangely here, but uh, based on the meteor's trajectory that we created, it's going to go behind the house here. And then we'll probably end up cutting off the end of this shot here because it's not really going to be in the shot anymore. So whoever was recording this will have just turned off their camera. All right, so at this point, we're just about ready to get started actually building the meteor effect. But before we do that, let's move on to our next lesson where we'll actually go in and...